but okay cool but yeah that's the problem like like i agree with what kesha is saying with that like some women really are you know more of strong-minded so they already know what's up you know what i'm saying and some guys kind of respect that shit and then some guys don't simple as that yeah you can't you can't little girl huh you can't you can't you can't give her the motive to say oh well i like it like this or it's no way you know what i'm saying because right. truth be told if you yeah. need to go tomorrow she still got everything you know she had when you came so it's like right. If he walk away, he know it's a less chance of it really affecting her versus somebody who genuinely need him. Right. Exactly. 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 So it's a whole different vibe, and a lot of men can't take that. Exactly. And I've been on both sides of the fucking field, so I know how it is like i was the person who was wearing the pants and then the person who literally now is dependent on um my man 100 percent. you know what i'm saying so right you know right. It, it 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 sucks you know what i'm saying because especially a person you know i used to work 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 but i hurt it myself uh about a year and a half ago and hurt it my back and i can't do it like i used to and ever since then you know i've been depending on who i'm with right now and it's kind of like mentally for me as a person who like the work that's that fucks me up you know so but true but also too as a woman when you have been a woman and you have done so much and your everyday life consists of you giving more than you actually gain Uh uh-huh sometimes i feel like god put you in a place where it's okay to accept help because sometimes help or sometimes having to depend on somebody else is more of a of a blessing than a curse Mm-hmm. It's just that we don't look at it that way because it's it's always independent. Like I'm this woman and I'm I'm so independent. Right. Yes, you're independent. It's also a certain degree to say it's okay to have somebody that I can depend on versus me always having to be the person that everybody else can depend on. Right. 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 So when you have been independent for so long, it's like. How do I I train myself into accepting versus me giving? Right, and I am a giver. Even when you do it, Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. don't know how you, you you know, it's hard to juggle accepting things when you're so used to giving. Right, exactly. So it's, it's, yeah, it really is like, you know, and that's me. I've been a giver for so fucking long, like until even if it ain't a relationship or a friendship or whatever. If I know you, it don't matter. Like I've been that kind of person. Like, hey, here you go, twenty dollar, thirty dollar. You know, what I'm saying I've been that person since day one. I, I so I don't know right. how to accept. That's my problem, and you know, I just like you know, I'm learning how to you know accept somebody helping me out. You know. And in accepting from a man, too, because you know how, you know, we black women, we've been raised to be strong black women and doing what we got to do right. to survive. So that's just like, right. you know, like, huh, that's all we know, you know, we didn't that's have true. the privilege like some women. Oh, I could just stay home all day and, you know, chill or whatever like that, you know, all right. Mm-hmm. I like that. And also, too, though, some women are so used to being the woman that don't want to get up and be independent. Like some people just don't have no drive and no life and no no morals about themselves. To it, it's just like mm-hmm. you find yourself stuck in the same predicament you was in five years ago. So it's like when you gonna get up? Right. Like when you gonna bring yeah. that to on two feet? So I mean, it's levels to. I feel like as women. Women who have been the women who get up and go get it. Mm-hmm. At some point in their life, they deserve to be pampered. Exactly. As a woman, you just yeah, yeah, yeah. to doing it all. Hey, um, sure, I'm not trying to get religious, but it says it biblically too. Huh, period. Uh, man supposed to be the one that supposed to protect and supposed to be the one who supposed to make sure the woman is okay and all right in her household. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. I'm just going to be real. <laughs> but... But wait, let me, let me said, take you back. Because when you say time. that, because when you say, yes, we was taught, yes, we was taught that a man is supposed to provide while a woman stay home and take care of home. 
But truth be told, in the world that we, that we live in, think about it. Yes, we done heard them stories of our grandma saying, oh, yeah, he pay all my bills. I don't give a fuck what he do as long as all the bills paid. But yeah. What you got to understand is what, what grandma didn't tell was that, yeah, I caught hell. Yeah, I got cheated on. Yeah, I had no fucking control of my goddamn life. Come on he now. He paid all the bills. Yes, so, come so, on. So truth be told, I don't want that type of spouse. I want the type of spouse that come we on. can go half on everything because what's yours is mine as well because we actually provided together so 50 feet to work for me because guess what? I would rather have that than that old-fashioned love where grandma would stress the fuck out. Ain't no telling what her man was doing. And nine she times like out of ten, grandma couldn't leave the day on the bar if she wanted to because she ain't got shit to leave with. Right. And even if she did have shit to leave with, it was a disgrace to leave a man and be a, a man, a leave a man than a man to leave a woman. It was more of a disgrace. Right. So at the end of the day, it's, you it know. Was right, exactly. And you know what I'm saying? Even when it came to divorce, when it, they made sure that the guy wrote, when they paperwork, guy divorced the wife when it came to that. Right. So, yeah. Even if a woman did have Grandma something. Took them ass whooping. Yeah, that's Grandma sad. Grandma slaved over that kid. Mm-hmm. Grandma got, Grandma got fucked on whenever he decided to fuck her outside of fucking who he was fucking on the outside. Come on. Right, exactly. You better, girl. Grandma Come on. Grandma had to deal with him going out there making all them babies on her. And now all these kids coming to the surface while she was sitting at home being the fucking maid. Grandma, that one life. That was struggle, Grandma. Come on. You better preach, girl. Come that on. That was struggle. Let's talk about it. Come on. Let's talk about <laughs> it. That's, Period. See, that's, what, see, that's, what, that's what they didn't tell us. Mm -hmm. See, you got to understand one thing about it, and I say this all the time to people. No, one I don't thing about my life, uh, my life ain't hands. fabricated. Because truth be told, I want you to know my it's ugly because you got to understand one thing. You got to go through the ugly to get to the good. You got to go through the mm -hmm. ugly to get to success. Mm -hmm. None of that shit ain't just came and fell out the sky. So, nah, tell me your ugly side. Let me know your ugly side because you know why? I'm going to value you more as a person when you allow me the opportunity to see who you are before all of this. Right. Mm -mm -mm. Take the mask off because you know the mask going to eventually come off. Come on now. The mask, the mask coming off. See, that's what they ain't telling. <laughs> see, grandma ain't telling you all them night she. She done laid in a bed and cried her eyes out because granddad ain't come home. Come on. And we're making she so knew where he was at, yeah. but she knew she couldn't complain because she ain't had shit to complain. How can you complain, come on, when you have nothing? Come on, cause like I said, either or. You know, if a women did, if women didn't get married off, they was in the other um stuff business. You know what I'm saying? They had to do what they had to do. Right. Um, and which you know, it was a certain age they had to be married off too. And they, if they didn't get married off at a certain age, they wasn't considered good either. So it, it goes deep. It goes deep. True indeed. Mm hmm. True indeed. Yeah, but not, see, not grandma sitting at home with a house full of children while granddaddy living his best damn life. Of them sitting at home not having a job and not doing nothing and, and granddaddy paid all the bills. They didn't tell us the shit that went on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So as exactly. adults, a lot of a lot of women get walked over because they truly believe that this is the way we supposed to live when in fact it's not. It's not. It's a generational curse. It's not. A generational curse has been taught through each generation when it comes to it. And people are just now right. breaking it. People are just now breaking it. Mm -hmm. I made a promise to myself that I had to break my generational curse because I wouldn't allow my kids to suffer the way I did. If I would have known the things that I know now, then I would have been able to protect myself. Right. But I'm thankful for everything I went through because truth be told, after going through it all, I survived. I still had that time to correct the error before it was too late. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With this conversation need to be taught by the younger people who really don't know. That's the problem. Gener the millennials, the young millennials in the generation Z don't really know. 
and it's kind of getting back to it because these rappers they taking advantage of women like that too now it's getting back to the cycle but it's more popular now because oh that rapper he just gave me 10 bands so it's okay for him to slap me around do what he want to do to me and this and that and etc right. see it's getting back that to the cycle my man said look at Bill Cosby oh Bill Cosby mm -hmm. is a good example too but see with him he thought he wasn't going to get touched because he was up there with the people of the elite but I feel like he made somebody mad. And they was like, okay, we got you. We're going to destroy you and remind you that you are a black man. Even though you at your older age, we're going to go ahead and expose all your sins and all your, your past stuff that you've done. And we're going to make sure that your legacy do not live on. That's what happened to him. Oh, indeed. Period. And, you know, and it's sad to say that because I love the Cos Cosby show was a great influence for the black community back in the day to show that, hey, we could be more than just thug, bang, ganging, NWA and all that kind of stuff. We can be a lawyer, a doctor, a family that have both parents in the household and still make it in this American society. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hug. Yeah, you but, but, okay, so I, I got a topic that we could talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and the topic is like me personally, I'm I'm a single woman, right? Uh huh. Okay. But as a single woman, I never understood. Like, as a woman, we all have error, right? Oh, oh yes, we do. Yes, but Lord. What I. What I didn't take the time to do was because for so many years we have been living in generational curses, I never took the time to fully understand what it was to be a woman. Mm. Now, because, finding out what it was. See, I wrote a book called Addicted to Power, and I'm working on my, my second book, which is Addicted to Power Part 2. But just because I'm so versatile, I told God that whatever situation he placed me in, whenever he bring me out, I'll forever speak about it. I'll forever live to be greater due to the fact that because it's a lot of women who battle a lot of different things. Yes, yes. And as a, as a, as a woman, so many women are afraid to speak on it because they, they more concerned with what is going to be said. Versus how many people they can fully help. You get what I'm saying? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. With that being said, you know, I, I wrote a book called Addicted to Power because I didn't understand my power. And what I mean is for every person on this panel, we all got power. Mm -hmm. But a lot of us, for one, don't know how to tap into our power. And for two, we lose our power because we have been faced with so much shit that we, we lose power. You get what I'm saying? So so it's right. like once you lose that power, it's hard trying to build yourself back up to gain that power, you know? Exactly. So I said, to be 33 years old and I'm still single, right? Uh-huh. I've been through hell and high waters and back. There's no reason why I'm 33, I got my shit together, I'm beautiful as hell, and I'm fucking single. So mm -hmm. one day I really just had to tap me in the ass, God. I said, what is the issue? But what a lot of people don't understand is this. The pandemic has taught me a lot. Not only has it taught me a lot of, of being able to, to reevaluate myself, yes. but also to reevaluate the people around me. And what I, what I mean by that is 90% of the black population and, and that that's not being I'm not being racial I'm just speaking in general and it, it happens with, outside of our race oh no baby talk because I'm about that yes mm -hmm. yeah 90% 90 of our population has grew up in single parent homes right mm -hmm. so so for the so for the 10% that grew up with both parents it's a difference and what I mean by that is for that 90% that grew up in a single parent home, we use sex as a, a coping mechanism. So I say that to say, people who have been through the most are those people who love to fuck. Yeah. Now, people who grew up, people who grew up in a home with two parents, 
They might they might have sex two, maybe two times a week. Sex not really an issue for them because truth be told, they not broke. They hard ain't been broken or they ain't really been through no real pain. See, mm. see, when you're dealing with a person who, who done carried pain for years on top of years and they taking everything that they've been when they masking that shit with sex. Right. So 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 I had to ask myself. You loved I love to fuck. But when I really thought about it, it was like you fucking yeah. As a woman I did that. I ain't ashamed to say I did that. But most of my power, I felt like I gained most of my power with being able to have control over a man. Because truth be told, I knew I had the power because I knew what he lacked as a man. Come on. Okay. Now, I knew what to do to you, how to do it to you. And my goal was to make you fall in love with me because mentally, I've been through so much fucked up shit that I didn't even understand that hurt people hurt other people. Come on. So because I was in a fucked up space, I wanted to ruin you as a man because I wasn't really a woman. Right, right. I value, I ran off of my own expectations of who the fuck I should be. No, who I was for everybody else versus who I needed to be for myself. Right. So I say that, yes, I'm 33 and I'm tired of being single, but how the fuck can I expect change when I'm still out here fucking? Right, you need to. Ha- you need to have that Go celibacy. Ahead. You know what I'm saying? That's what people don't realize. Your body, your temple is really, it's really, it's strong. You know what I'm saying? When you connecting with all of these men and all these people and stuff like that, you connecting with different spirits, different this, different that. So at the end of the day, it's gonna break you down, even if you was trying to do it in a certain way as for pleasure. Um, you know right. what I'm saying? So at the end of the day. When it comes to it, you have to have a cleansing moment in your body. As a woman, a woman needs that too. A man needs it too, but men going to be men, period. But as a woman, you need to have a moment of clarity, of cleanse mind, cleanse soul and body to be able to focus on what your main goal is in life. You can continue, hon, but that's all. Mm-hmm. And truth be told, they already know how they want to deal with you when they meet you. Come on. So in the back of your mind, you thinking you can change a man, but once his mind is already made up, it ain't no changing him. So so I say that to say, if he see you as a fuck friend, that's what you're going to always be. It doesn't mean that he won't catch feelings. It just mean that, okay, I'm putting you in the friend zone, and, and truth be told, they could even want you. But they're going to put you in that friend zone because they would rather have that friend to still be able to have sex with versus giving you a relationship. Because if the relationship fail, they knew that they know if it fail, I lose the sex and I lose my friend. 